Hi, my name is Ben Koenig, and in part 3 of the Autodesk 360 vignettes we're going to look specifically at some of the Autodesk Inventor benefits and associated workflows. If you haven't already seen parts 1 and 2 of this series of uh, Autodesk 360 vignettes, I'd recommend you do so to further assist you in understanding the workflow seen within this demonstration. So after creating your Autodesk 360 account, you can access that storage facility directly from within Inventor. First thing we need to do is to sign in, utilising the button here at the top right hand side of the screen. And assuming you've got web access, it's just a case of specifying your username and password. So after logging in, we can use the drop down here and review account details. And account details will summarise as to how much space we've got left within the cloud. In this particular example, we can see that we're using 185 megabytes of our subscription 25 gigabyte limit. It will also show us as to how many cloud units we've utilised. So to give you an example, in the uh, demo that we'll look at later, utilising Autodesk 360 optimization for Autodesk Inventor, when using Product Design Suite Ultimate, we provided an allowance of 500 cloud units. To be able to run one optimization, we would use five units of that allowance. So as all Inventor users will know, being able to share your information to customers or suppliers can be sometimes difficult due just to purely the number of files that Inventor creates. To give you an idea, we've got a small uh, sub-assembly here, uh, and to appreciate the number of files, if we were to expand this assembly uh, to show all children, we can appreciate then as to how many files we've actually got to gather up uh, and package in order to be able to send this information out. Well, the great thing about Autodesk 360 is we can use now the online tab, and this allows us to use this option, save and send to cloud. Now, just like the pack and go, this will go away and it will find all of the associated references uh, that Inventor needs to be able to send the data up in the cloud uh, as a complete package. So, after summarising as to what it's going to send, we did it, then just select to save and send to the cloud. Okay, so another option you can see at the top left hand side there is the Autodesk 360 link. So the idea of this is that we can access our cloud documents directly from within Inventor without having to separately open up a web browser and navigate to the address. So set it to log you in automatically and straight away we can see the activity stream uh, and see the uh, Inventor part files and assembly files being uploaded as part of the data set that we were looking at earlier. We can view this by month by you know, what's been happening today over the last two months. We can also group the data, so group it by who's uploaded, who's downloaded, who's shared information. What I'm going to do here is move over to documents and we can see the folder created that relates to the data that we're uploading. What I might want to do is to start navigating through that folder to eventually get to the files that I'm after. Now a quick way to be able to get access to all of these files and associate them to a particular project regardless of what folder they're in is to select all of them and here we're going to create a new category for a new project. So we save the category, select all of the files and then at the top there we can globally associate them to project 10154. So once complete, as you can see on the left hand side of the screen, we've now 75 files associated to that particular project. So rather than have to deal with folders, complicated folder structures, we can access files much more quickly and efficiently by utilising categories. So by selecting the link on the left hand side, it will search for all the folders and group together all of the uh, files associated to that particular project. OK, so we want to uh, dig a bit deeper within the data. So it may be a case that from within our project, we want to look specifically for Inventor IPT files. So here we can do a search within the system and quickly get that data. We can then take it a step further. So if we know, you know part of the file name, so in this case, we're going to say that the part or the file name begins with mount and then start and then again search. So after finding the file that we're after, we're going to go and access the file and we're going to look at some of the sharing capabilities from within the Autodesk 360 account. 
So if I want to uh, invite project members to, to look at this file or access this file, there's two ways you can do it. We firstly have public sharing. So toggling on this switch allows me to access the link and I can then simply email that to a customer or supplier in order for them to be able to access the file. But the key difference is the fact that they don't have to log in. They don't have to have a 360 account themselves to be able to access this data. Instead, if I were to switch off public sharing, and instead use this option here to edit sharing, I can uh, activate private sharing. So here, for example, I would specify their uh, email address. And as you can see, I've worked with this collaborator in the past. So this is my alternative email address. And I can add them to the project. After adding to them to the project, I then get the option to be able to use the drop down here and be able to specify as to what access I allow them to have. So do I want them just to be able to view the file or do I want them to be able to download that file, make modifications and upload a new version? In this case, I'm going to give them full access. And I can add a small note here and email that through to them. In order to be able to show you what it looks like to publicly share as well, I'm going to toggle this option on as well. And again, I'm going to email that through to the same project member. OK, so here you can see within uh, my Hotmail account, we have two emails. Uh, the last one that came in was the publicly shared file. So as you can see, it looks a bit different. And if I select this link, it takes me directly to the file without me having to, to log in to Autodesk 360. So it's just a case here of me downloading it. Alternatively, if we were to jump back into the Hotmail account uh, and go back to the inbox, the second one is the file uh, where we've set it up to be privately shared. So if you want a bit more security around uh, what you're sharing and who, we, who you're sharing it with, uh, here you would use this link here. And uh, as you can see, once I select the link, it then requires me to log in, specifying again my username and password so I know exactly who's accessed it. So uh, uh, these credentials are slightly different to the ones I used before. This is my test account. And as you can see here, I've got the original project member and myself with access to that file, both active with full access. While many of the Autodesk 360 services are available with a subscription to a commercial standalone product such as AutoCAD, Many of these services are designed to work well within the suites. On this slide you can see a quick overview of the Autodesk 360 services that are compatible with each of the suites. For the purposes of the next demonstration we're going to concentrate on Autodesk 360 Inventor Optimization. So Inventor Optimization provides an easy intuitive interface allowing for quick and easy simulation setup. While the software is performing multiple simulations within the cloud, the designer or engineer can continue to do other work on his or her desktop. Offloading simulation to the cloud enables users to simulate many different design configurations in parallel, performing simulations in much less time. In order to access the associated subscription benefits, after logging into cloud documents, access the link on the right hand side of the interface. In order to use Inventor Optimization, you require a number of cloud units. And cloud units are provided on a per seat basis only, no matter how many units are on any one seat. Within the products, after logging into the cloud, we can quickly review our remaining units in order to clearly see what we have remaining within our allocation. As you can see on this slide, uh, the Ultimate Suite would have 500 units, the Premium Suite at 250, Standard Suites at 100, and point products such as AutoCAD, again at 100 cloud units per seat. Autodesk are currently in the process of allowing you to buy additional units when you reach your limit. However, for the time being, until this is available, if you do reach your limit, they will just allow you to carry on, which is great news and only encourages the use of this new technology.
You will need a certain number of cloud units to use Autodesk 360 rendering, optimization for Inventor, and structural analysis for Revit. Currently, it costs, for example, five cloud units to render one image in the Autodesk 360 cloud, and likewise, it costs five cloud units to run one Inventor optimization job, and it costs three cloud units to perform one structural analysis. In the following demonstration, as part of these series of Autodesk 360 videos, we can see this technology in action presented by Tony Jones, our resident simulation specialist.